Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet the chunky stash busting cowl. This is a really fun project and it allows you to take a little trip to your yarn stash and look for all of your leftovers and the end result is a beautiful scarf or cowl that you can work up with all of your leftovers. I chose a similar weight yarn for my this, I actually made the cowl, and I'm gonna show you how to make a scarf or a cowl. So I chose some coordinating colors of um, basically a similar weight yarn. And I did a, it's done in a ripple, so it adds a little fun and interest. And I randomly uh, made stripes. Some are very thick stripes, some are thin stripes, depending on the amount of yarn that I had left. And the result is a very chunky, kind of artsy looking scarf and it's very, very cozy. And again, you can make this into a scarf or you can seam it like I did and make it into a really chunky, cozy cowl. And I'll show you how to do both ways towards the end of this video. So let's get started. For this project, you'll want to collect yarn of a similar weight and then match your hook based on what you have. Now, if you follow the Fiberflex blog, I had a lot of projects using bulky yarn. So I had a lot of um, different colors and I kind of picked the theme of purples and violets. I also added a little bit of charcoal and like this silver leftover and this, um, this shade is called linen. So I added some other things just to kind of coordinate it all. But you can do rainbow, you can do uh, many, many colors, whatever you have on hand. I would just recommend a similar weight. Now these here are super bulky. And then this one here is classified as bulky, but they're all similar. Um, I'm gonna be using a nine millimeter N crochet hook with my project. If you're using a different weight, uh, the pattern will be the same because this is kind of like a leftovers type of project, but just use the recommended hook size for the majority of the yarn you'll be using. Now, this bulky yarn normally recommends a little bit of a smaller hook, but it's going to create the area where I'll be working this charcoal. It'll make it just a little bit more open and drapey, and that's totally fine. This is kind of like a um, giant stash busting project, okay? So you'll also need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. Just note that if you use a different weight, like worsted weight or even sock yarn or something like that, just use a coordinating hook. And your scarf might be a little bit smaller if you go down in the hook size and yarn weight. We're gonna select our first color from all of this yarn that we've gathered, all these wonderful colors. So I'm gonna start with this purple here, this like pale lavender color. And I'm gonna show you how to do the first couple of rows in the pattern with this yarn. And then once we've established a few rows, then I'll show you how to switch colors and move on. I wanted to mention too, if you've noticed, and like most people, when they have yarn leftovers, you might have a little bit of one color. You might have a lot of one color. So this scarf really doesn't have a rhyme or reason. We're going to do maybe one row of something, three rows of another color, etc. And that's what makes this project so fun. It's not um, really anything goes, okay? So let's do the first couple of rows with this pale lavender color. And I'm gonna show you how to switch colors after we're done that part, okay? So to begin our project, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your crochet hook, bring up a loop, and then just tighten. Our scarf has a starting chain of 25. It's gonna be, because of this is bulky yarn, it's gonna be fairly wide for a scarf, but we have a lot of yarn to work with. So we have, um, we can make a nice, big, cozy scarf with this. And again, if you're using um, thinner yarn or worsted weight yarn, obviously um, your scarf is gonna be a little bit narrower than the scarf we're gonna get here. But really, this is kind of an anything goes pattern. It's really just to use up all these yarn leftovers you might have on hand, okay? So we have our slip knot on our hook. Let's make a chain of 25, okay? To make a chain, wrap the yarn around your hook and bring it through the loop. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10. Let's get a little bit more yarn. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Okay, so we have our starting chain and we're ready to begin row one. As you can see, it's gonna be nice and wide, nice big cozy scarf. To work row one, we're gonna work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. This loop here does not count. So one, two, three, and four. To make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into the chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. Next, we're going to work a double crochet in each of the next four chains. So one, two, three, and four. Next, we're gonna skip two chains. So skip these two chains, and then in the next four chains, work a double crochet in each one of those chains. So one, two, three, and four. So you can see we've already are starting to establish this chevron shape. Next, we're going to chain two, one, two, then we'll work a double crochet in each of the next four chains. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, and now you can see it has a valley and a peak. Okay, so next we will skip the next two chains, one, two, then work a double crochet in each of the next four chains. So again, one, two, three, and four. You'll have one more chain left on your row, so just work two double crochets right into that chain. So one and two, okay? So you can see we've already established our pretty, you can kind of sharpen those corners up a little bit, but we've established our pretty little chevron shape, okay? So let's move on to row two. I'm gonna stick with the same color just to show you how the row has worked. And then after that, we'll switch to this purple. To continue on to row two, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. Next, we're going to work a double crochet into the first double crochet that we come to. So work a double crochet right into that first stitch. Then we'll work a double crochet in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. 
Next, we're going to skip the next two stitches. So skip those one, two, and then the next stitch, we're working a double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. Now we've arrived at the chain two space from the previous row that created this decorative little hole. So what we're going to do right into the space, not the stitch like we did before, but right into the chain two space, work a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet right into that chain two space. So it'll look like that. Okay, so after we've worked into the space, then we're going to switch back to this working into the stitches. So work a double crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Then we're going to skip two stitches, one, two, then work a double crochet in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. To finish off the row, we're going to, this is our turning chain from the previous row. So at the top little chain of that turning chain from the previous row, we're going to work two double crochets into the top of that turning chain. Okay. Now because it's a chain and it's off to the side like this, it might be a little bit snug, but that's okay. So work one double crochet into that turning chain and then another double crochet right into the top of that. That'll round off the, this row nicely and continue with this chevron look, okay? So let me just show you what we've done so far. We have some nice valleys established and a peak. And as you can see, our scarf is nice and wide and it's lofty and it's looking really pretty. So I wanna show you how to do, because this is kind of like a, a scrap stash busting kind of project, um, you'll probably be changing and switching yarns pretty often and um, most of these kind of scrappy projects are striped. So let me show you how to change color. There's lots of ways to switch yarn if you need to add a new yarn ball or switch colors or what have you. But um, if you have a preferred method of joining a new yarn, definitely feel free to do that. But um, I just like to cut it and tie it right on. But if you have a different way you like to do it, definitely feel free to do that as well. So I'm just gonna, I cut the yarn, I'm just gonna fasten it off. So the row we just completed, you're gonna repeat over and over and over until the scarf is as long as you'd like it to be. A general rule of thumb, I get a lot of questions about how long to make the scarf. Depending on who you're making it for, a general rule of thumb I like to follow is to measure, go from one hip all the way around the back of the neck and then back down to the other hip. And that gives you a nice long scarf. If you wanna wrap it a couple times around the neck, then make your scarf a little bit longer than that. But the hip to hip measurement is what I generally follow when I'm making scarves. So just keep repeating row two over and over and over until your scarf is as long as you'd like it to be. So we're gonna continue with row two. I'm just gonna show you how to do add a new color. So this last stitch that we've worked, you're gonna insert your hook into that stitch and hook that new yarn on and just pull it through. And then just tie it right on. Now we're gonna weave the ends in as we go along because that will save us um, a lot of time at the end. Now this end here, you'll have to weave in with a tapestry needle at the end. And then at the very end of the scarf, you'll have one more little tail. But all these in-between tails we can weave in as we go along, okay? So what I'm going to do is hold these little tails along the edge as I work. And I'm just going to get started. We've already seen row two. I'm just going to get started with row two just to show you the new color, okay? 
So continuing with our row two sequence, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. Now you might need to give these a tug to kind of neaten this up a little bit, okay? So in that first stitch, you're gonna work a double crochet. I'm just gonna show you the first couple of stitches with the new yarn. Work a that double crochet in the first stitch, then double crochet in the next four stitches, just like we did in the previous row. Again, I'm holding the tails so the first couple of stitches might feel a little bit awkward in your hand if you're holding the tails as well. Okay, so one, I just worked one, now we're going to work two, get some more yarn, three, and four. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going with my scarf, finish off row two, and then just keep repeating row two until it's as long as you'd like it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more rows and get some length on my scarf. And then when we get towards the end, I'll show you how to finish off your scarf and we'll weave in these ends. So just keep adding more yarn, whatever you have on hand, and keep working row two until your scarf is as light, long as you'd like it to be. So I'm just working that very last stitch of the very last row. And again, we just repeated row two over and over and over until our um, scarf or cowl, whatever you want it to be, um, is as long as you want. And I just wanted to show you before we continue that I went ahead and worked lots of rows. Some were, this is four rows, two rows. I used all the colors that I shared with you earlier in this video. And some of the, the thinner yarns produced a more open texture. This, um, this is Lion Brand Homespun. It was very bumpy and multicolored. And so I just kind of um, got creative and did, this one has I think six rows, two rows. So I just went all over the place with it. And what it produced was a very pretty, now all the colors coordinate but it produced a very pretty textured kind of artistic looking um, uh, scarf. So what you want to do next, if you want yours to be a large thick scarf, go ahead and fasten off and then you can weave in your tail. You'll also have a tail where you began down here. So what we're going to do is weave this tail in. I'm also going to show you how to make this into a cowl if you prefer. So go ahead and weave this, this tail where you first began your project in. Now keep the colors, so I'm keeping the light purple in the light purple section. We don't want to go into other colors because it'll your little tail will show. We're just going to weave that tail in because we're not going to need that for anything. And just kind of straighten that out. Get that edge nice and clean looking. There we go. So just trim when you're done weaving. And then the bottom is complete. Okay, so again, if you want to make this into a scarf, you can go ahead and fasten off at this point and weave that tail in just like we wove the other tail in just now. If you want to make this into a cowl, like I did, I really love bulky cows. They're so cozy. Um, you can seam this together. So if we look at our cowl, if we fold it in, because we're transforming this into a cowl at this point, if you look at our edges, they kind of fit together like a puzzle. So this ripple goes down, up, and down. This one goes up, down, and up. So they, they match. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to seam this. Now you can cut a piece of yarn and just sew this together. That's a really easy way to seam. But I have enough yarn left, and because this is a stash-busting project, I want to use it up. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a slip stitch seam. So what we're going to do is figure out, now mine is reversible, but if you have a favorite side, um, turn that to the inside of your work, because we're going to turn it back out, okay? 
The slip stitch seam will make a little tiny seam, but it's um, fairly invisible. Okay, so what we're going to do is put your hook back into your, your loop here. Then we're going to match up the edges, okay, the best we can. And then what you're going to do is you're going to locate that edge there. This is the edge. So you're going to go through both layers. So locate the first stitch on the bottom layer, the first stitch on the top layer. And again, these are going to match up like a puzzle when we're finished. Okay, so insert the hook into both layers, both stitches of both layers, and then wrap yarn around hook, pull it through both loops, and then pull it through the loop that's already on your hook. Okay, so we're just going to do this all the way across. Insert the hook. Let me move this out of the way so we can see it better. Insert the hook into the first layer, insert the hook into the next layer, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both layers. Bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. So we're just going to do this all the way across. Insert the hook into both stitches of both layers. Yarn around hook. Bring it through the layers. Bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Okay? So this is a really quick and easy way to seam up a project. You can also do the same thing with a single crochet. That will give you a little bit more of a pronounced uh, seam like a little ridge along your work. Because we're using the same yarn as our last row, it's going to blend in very nicely. So we're just going to continue across and slip stitch seam all the way across. Okay, I'm going to continue uh, seaming my work. Now I want to show you too when you get to these. Um, these decorative holes that were created, you can just go into the chains here. Okay, it's the same thing. You're just going into the chain instead of these stitches. Okay, so I'm going to continue across and then we'll rejoin in a moment and I'll show you how to finish off the cowl. So I'm a little bit more than halfway across, but I just wanted to show you really quick the seam that we're getting with this. It's a nice, neat looking seam. And you can turn it back out to the right side as you work to kind of check on the progress of your seam. I like to, to kind of peek at it about halfway through. And you can see it, ha it makes a very nice seam that just blends right in and just continues to the next color. All right, I'm just working that last slip stitch into the last stitch, okay? So here's our seam, and I'm just gonna trim, cut a tail, Fasten off like that. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to, this is our very last tail. So we're just going to weave that in to this bright purple area. So just thread your tapestry needle, and weave that in. Okay, go in one direction. Come back in the other direction. Make sure you're going through just this, this one layer too, so you're not uh, accidentally sewing it to back together. Okay, and come in the other direction. You can pull that tail and trim. Okay, so we're all finished with our cowl. So let's turn it right side out, and it's a very nice size. It has some beautiful bulk to it. And we can inspect our seam to make sure it looks good. So here's our seam where we join it together. And it looks great. It blends nicely. And this cowl is full of texture. It's cozy. So that is how you crochet the chunky stash busting scarf or cowl, whatever you choose to make it. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.